Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives, and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis at support.greatdetectives.net or become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month by just going to patreon.greatdetectives.net. Well, now we get to the final circulating Howard Duff episode of Sam Spade. The original air date, September the 30th, 1950, and the title is The Farmer's Daughter Keeper. Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic and the new Wild Root Liquid Cream Shampoo present The Adventures of Sam Spade. Detective Agency. Me, sweetheart. Oh, Sam. I'm glad you're back in town. So am I, Effie. So am I. Confidentially, I didn't think I'd make it. Uh, Confidentially, that is. Was it dangerous, Sam? I should say it was. Why, for the past 24 hours, I've been at it hammer and tongs over hill and dale through shot and shell. It was enough to turn any ordinary man's blood to ice and his hair pure white. Oh, that sounds terrifying, Sam. I wish it had been only terrifying, Effie. It was blood-curdling, spine-chilling, hair-raising. I was bored. It was also rural and countryfied. Well, what happened, Sam? Tell me. You've heard of the Mutton's and the Coys? No. And the Boston Massacre? No. Custer's Last Stand? No. Well, put them all together and they spell uh, what I'll shortly be in to dictate, a report which I call in a burst of clever literary plagiarism, the Farmer's Daughter Caper. The Adventures of Sam Spade, Detective, starring Howard Duff. Produced, edited, and directed by William Spear. Presented by the makers of Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic, the non-alcoholic hair tonic that contains lanolin. To look your holiday best, friends, be sure to use Wild Root Cream Oil, America's favorite hair tonic. Wild Root Cream Oil grooms your hair neatly and naturally, relieves annoying dryness, removes loose, ugly dandruff. What's more, it's non-alcoholic and contains soothing lanolin. Get Wild Root Cream Oil in the big family size bottle or handy tube. Ask for it at your drug or toilet goods counter very first chance you get. For the holiday and all year round, use Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic. Again and again, the choice of men and women and children, too. And now, with Howard Duff as Spade, Wild Root brings to the air the greatest private detective of them all in the adventures of Sam Spade. I'm right here, Sam. Pull up all the shades. All right, Sam. Now, turn on every light in the place. But it's daylight. Do what I say. All right, Sam. Now, uh, check the closets. But what for? For snipers. What do you think? All right, Sam. Nobody here. Okay. I guess it's safe to come all the way in. Oh. What's this all about, Sam? I don't understand. Effie, it's just that I don't ever want to be caught in the dark again, especially when people are shooting at me. I want to see every nook and cranny of every square foot of land that surrounds me. Sam, who was shooting at you? Where? (sighs) They were shooting from the left, from the right, from up above, down below, everywhere. (gasps) Death was winging in on every breeze that blew, and they all blew my way. Oh, Sam, now stop this. I'm just dying of curiosity. (sighs) When my time comes, I hope that's all I ever die of. Ready? Yeah. Uh, date this week to Mr. Elliot Parson, Parson Drive Yourself Garage, 1618 St. Charles Street, San Francisco, 13, California. From Samuel Spade, license number 137596. Subject, the farmer's daughter caper. Dear Mr. Parson, I fear you have an explanation coming, one that you can pass along to your insurance company as to why the car I rented from you last week appeared as late as it did and in the condition it did. As you know, I rented said vehicle to drive to Middletown to bail a client out of the drunk tank. On the way back, a native showed me a shortcut, 
and I'll get him if it's the last thing I do. Dusk was falling, and so were my eyelids, when I saw a sign that said, Tourists Invited. Behind it stood a ramshackle farmhouse in a surly woodland setting. I should never have knocked on that farmhouse door, but then I wouldn't have had any story to tell, would I? Good evening, young man. Uh, Good evening, madam. I'm afraid I need a room for the night. Well, of course you do. Land sakes, you're tired, I can tell by your eyes. Been on the road long? Too long. Land sakes, of course you have. Come in, please. Thank you, ma'am. You'll find this is the homiest tourist home in California. Really like mother's, eh? Like your grandmother's. No electricity, no phones, just quiet. I see. Now, I have two rooms, a $3 one and a $5 one. Which one do you think you'd like? Uh, What's the difference? One last blanket, one squeaky spring, and with the $3 one, you might have to take a walk. I'll take the $5 one, thank you. I'm Mrs. Elkins, Mrs. Burt Elkins. Who might you be? Uh, Sam Spade. Spade? Land sakes, that's a very unusual name. (laughs) And who are you traveling with, Mr. Spade? Uh, I'm alone. Oh, I mean what company? We only accept traveling salesmen. You realize that? Oh, uh, yes. Well, I'm uh, I'm, uh, traveling for the makers of Mouton Mustache Wax. Oh, oh, use it all the time. You are well-groomed, madam. (laughs) You will go far, young man. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but before that, I'd like to go to bed. Well, come on. This way. She led me upstairs to my $5 room and left me. As lumpy as it was, the bed invited me, but I decided to shave first and thus facilitate an early start in the morning. I poured myself a drink out of my traveling bar kit and then stepped in to shave. It wasn't easy because all I had for light in there was an oil lamp. When I came back to the bedroom with a lamp in one hand, I stopped short in utter surprise. I'd heard about these things in traveling salesman stories, but I never expected to see it. She was sitting in an armchair, smoking a cigarette. High heels, silk stockings, light rayon dress, and a face right off the cover of Cosmopolitan. Hello, Sam. (laughs) Hello. uh, uh... Mary Smith. Huh? Hope you don't mind me just barging in. Well, no, no. Well, no, that is... uh... Afraid I'll bite you? (sighs) It never entered my mind. Well, I might. I'm so tired of talking to myself, I need someone like you. You know, you're not bad to look at. Who, me? Where do you live? What do you do for a living? Well, I guess you'd call me independently wealthy. I wish someone would. How nice. San Francisco? There must be some fog on my lapel. Look, Sam, I'll give it to you straight. I want to get out of here, go to San Francisco. Could you take a passenger tomorrow? Well, uh, what would your mother say? She's my aunt. What do I care what she says? I uh, don't belong on a farm. Out in a west wet pasture ruins my nylons. I'm a city girl, Philadelphia. Why did you leave? My parents died. Look, Sam, I won't be a burden to you. I just want to get to San Francisco. After that, I'm on my own. Sam... Take me with you. Please take me with you. You won't regret it. Well, what am I going to do with this lamp? Who cares? Oh, Sam. <gasps> what? Oh, I thought I'd find something like this going on in here. And what I, I... Get out of here. Go back to your room, young lady. Go on. Now. Mr. Spade. It does look bad, doesn't it? Oh, I'm not blaming you, Mr. Spade. Nan, sakes, it's her. She ain't responsible for what she does. She's like this all the time. I see. Now, when I go out, you just lock your door. Just keep it locked. But, ma'am, this is a $5 room. A sleepless hour later, I heard something slide under my door. I looked and found it was a note that read... Mr. Spade, Sam, please unlock your door, and when the house is quiet, I'll come and see you. I'm desperate, terribly, terribly desperate. Don't leave me. Give me a chance to tell you what it's all about, please. Stupid me, I unlocked my door, dressed again, and waited. An hour and a half later, I heard my doorknob turning in the dark. The door opened quietly and quickly. Sam, the things that go on in this house, they're insane. Oh. I've been here three months when my father died, I had no money, and because Aunt Maud was my only relative, I came here. And ever since I came, they never let me out of the house for more than an hour. They never let me see anyone or do anything. Why? I wish I knew. Five days ago, Uncle Bert left early one morning. He hasn't come back since. 
And Maud says he's away on business. He doesn't have any business. Yeah, well, even so, that doesn't seem strange to me. Oh, then there's my dog. Well, what about it? It it disappeared the same night Bert did. They told me it ran away. I know it didn't. I've had it for three years. It never ran away. Well, what do you think? Well, I, I was sure I could hear it howling somewhere for two or three nights. Then the howling stopped. I think I know where it is, but I don't know why. It scares me. Well, where do you think it is? Sam, you're going to think I'm crazy right out of my mind, but... Well, about 150 yards behind the house, there's a hillside with an old cave in it. Oh, an old cave. I don't know what it's used for, but yesterday I saw the whole front end of it closed. Closed with dirt. Sam, they buried that dog alive in that cave. I know it. Oh, wait a minute now. Uh, did you ask Mrs. Elkins? Yes. All she said was the dog ran away and mind your own business. She told me to leave the cave alone. Sam, let's go out there and look. Please. Well, uh... So big, brave, stupid Sam, idiot boy, allowed her to show me the back way out of the house and we sneaked to the barn together. She found a shovel and we walked to the cave. When my eyes got accustomed to the dark, I saw the entrance had been covered with dirt and recently. I took the shovel while she stood watching. I cleared half of the dirt away and worked as quietly as I could, but apparently not quietly enough. A flashlight suddenly hit both of us in the face and a shotgun barrel flashed in the beam. Get away from there before I shoot your head off. Uh, point that thing someplace else, please, ma'am. Just what do you think you're doing, mister? Uh, digging. Mary, you get back to the house. No. And Maud, I won't. Get back to the house before I count three or I'll put a load of buckshot right through you now. One. And Maud, my dog is in there. Two. All right. Now, Mrs. Elkins, suppose you put that gun down and tell me what this is all about. I huh? got one thing to say to you, mister. Get in your car and get out of here and don't waste any time doing it. But, madam, Your suitcase I... is in the car and your five dollars is with it. Yeah, but... Now get, before I shoot you as a trespasser. And I could do it, mister. Land sakes, I could do it. Now get! So I got under guard to my car. I got in and drove off. And this is in the driveway with a shotgun still pointed at me until I was out of sight. I turned left at the first crossroad, parked the car, and cut through the woods back to the farm. I could see a light in the living room. Nobody was in or near the barn. And when I got to the cave, there wasn't a sound anywhere. I picked up the shovel I dropped and started digging again. Thirty minutes later, the shovel broke a small hole through into that cave, and a stifling blast of fetid air rushed out, and something leaped out at me in the dark. And it wasn't the dog. It was a human hand on a human arm. The makers of Wild Root Cream Oil are presenting the weekly Sunday adventure of America's favorite private detective, Sam Spade. Now, here's important news on good grooming. If you want the well-groomed look that helps you get ahead, socially and on the job, listen. Recently, thousands of people from coast to coast who actually purchased Wild Root Cream Oil were asked, how does Wild Root Cream Oil compare with the hair tonic you previously used? The results were amazing. Better than four out of five who replied said they preferred Wild Root Cream Oil. Remember, non-alcoholic Wild Root Cream Oil contains lanolin. It grooms the hair naturally, relieves dryness, and removes loose, ugly dandruff. So if you want your hair to be more attractive than ever before, get the new 25-cent Get Acquainted bottle of Wild Root Cream Oil, America's leading hair tonic, on sale at all drug and toilet goods counters. It's also available in larger economy bottles and the handy new tube. By the way, smart girls use Wild Root Cream Oil, too, and mothers say it's grand for training children's hair. Get Wild Root Cream Oil. Again and again, the choice of men and women and children, too. And now, back to the Farmer's Daughter Caper. Tonight's adventure with Sam Spade. In a night already full of surprises, I should have been ready for the next one, but I wasn't. The loose earth, which had blocked the entrance to the cave, suddenly fell away, and I fell with it. Then I heard something like nothing on earth. Nails dragged across my face, taking skin and flesh with them. I twisted and went down, and something went down with me. The snarl became a voice. Bury me alive. 
burn me alive, I'll kill you. I'll kill you. And he did his best, which was pretty good. Finally, I got a good hold on him and sat on his chest. After that, I lit a match and looked at a tall, thin man in his middle 40s. He was caked with mud from head to foot. His hands were impossibly torn and bleeding. I could guess why. Judging from the stubble on his face, he'd been bottled up in that cave at least five days. How he was still alive, I didn't know. He acted like a madman, and he had every right to. But surprise, when his eyelids fluttered open again, he read a very sane line. I'm all done in. You got a drink, friend? Not on me. They hit me on the head and left me there. They thought I'd stay in there forever. Forever. Who put you there? Who did it? <laughs> but they couldn't keep me there. I took my way out tonight. Tonight. I took my way out. Tonight. <laughs> the force of the bullets knocked them halfway back down the incline to the cave. All I could do was hit the dirt. Finally, when it seemed safe, I broke cover and ran smack into somebody carrying two bags. Oh, no, no, please, please. Let's have a look at you. Sam, Sam, it's me. Sam, I knew you wouldn't go away without me. I knew it. I couldn't stay in that awful house any longer. None of that now. Who was that shooting at? I don't know. Where's your aunt? In the house, I suppose. I slipped out the back way. Any visitors tonight? No. What is it? What is it? I think I find your Uncle Bert. Come on. led her back to the cave entrance and showed her the body of the man I dragged out. I watched her face a long time as she looked at him very carefully. That's not Uncle Bert, Sam. Really? No. It's Mr. Linden. Jewelry salesman. Came to the place a few nights ago. Five nights ago? Yes. Yes, come to think of it. The same night your uncle disappeared. Tell me, did you ask Mr. Linden to take you back to San Francisco the same way you asked me? I... I... Did you? Yes. He said he would. Got up early and left without me. He didn't get far. What kind of car was he driving? I don't know. I don't remember. Do you drive a car? Yes, but Here. I'm... Mine's down the road about 500 yards. Go to the nearest phone and call the highway patrol, a sheriff, anybody who represents law. Got that? Yes, yes. I know exactly what to do. To make sure we were both thinking of the same thing to do, I followed her in the dark, watched her get into the car I rented from you, and drive off. Then I turned around, put a new clip in my gun, and walked back to the old homestead. It was still very homey. By the light of an oil lamp, Mrs. Elkins was peacefully knitting what looked like a shroud. Why, Mr. Spade? Why, Mrs. Elkins? Land sakes. Land sakes. Now that we got that out of the way, let's get down to business. If you're here to make trouble, young man, believe me, I can handle trouble. My kind of stock know about trouble. Well, uh, suppose you tell me about the trouble I just had, or haven't you heard all the shots that were fired around here tonight? Shots? My, my. My, my. Seems I would have heard gunshots. Seems you would. Look, uh, I've got a sheriff on the way. Have you, Mr. Spade? Why? I suppose you didn't hear the shooting. Oh, yes, yes, I'd forgotten. Was anyone hurt? A man named Linden. He's dead. Linden. Linden. Now, that sounds familiar. It should. He stayed here five nights ago. He was a jewelry salesman. Yes, yes, now I remember. You say he's dead? Somebody tried to bury him alive in your little cave. How awful. I do declare. I thought you would. Well? You must be joshing, Mr. Spade. I'm not joshing at all, Mrs. Elkins. Well? Buried alive, you say. Look, uh, let's talk just like plain folks. Where's your husband? Where's the jewelry samples you probably stole from Linden? Is there anything else you want to say? Gunshots, eh? Well, well. I left the sweet old thing knitting and rocking and made my way through the house looking for guns, jewelry, and killers. <laughs> I got downstairs in time to see Mrs. Elkins disappear out the front door. When I tried to follow, I stumbled over the rocking chair, which was indeed a lucky thing for me. After a few minutes of silence, bravely crawling on my stomach, I followed the shadows of the house until they blended into the shadows of a large, hulking building, which happened to be the barn. Inside, I bumped my head on the radiator of a car. Naturally, I didn't find any keys in it, but I did find a familiar jewelry salesman-type mud-soaked corpse. <laughs> I was trying to remember how to cross ignition wires. I heard the hum of a motor and saw two headlight beams swinging up the driveway. They lasted as long as any other lights. 
The car came to a lurching stop, and a thick-set figure in a Stetson hat stumbled towards me, tugging at a gun. That burned gold blame cuss thing, I... Undo the flap. Oh, thanks. Hey, put your hands up, whoever you You'll are. You'll be the sheriff. You're dead blame right on the sheriff. You're dead blame right on the sheriff. Who are you? What's the idea of shooting the lights out in my car? My car. Oh, you Slade? Spade. Well, I'm Homer Pickett, sheriff of this county. Homer? The girl come, woke me up, said all sorts of funny things going on around here. Said there'd been a murder. Now, who's killed? What's going on, Stan? Sam. Well, uh, for one thing, somebody's been trying all sorts of ammunition on me for size. You don't say. I do say, Mr. Sheriff. <clears throat> Why? Because I found a man in a cave who'd been left there to die. Want to look at the corpse? You can look at him right here. He's sitting in this car. So, yeah. How did he get here? Uh, somebody moved him here. Shorten a move a corpse till the police examine it. I didn't move it. Huh? Now, listen closely. Listening? Huh? I found the man. He was still alive. Then somebody shot him. Shorten a moved him. Then they tried to kill me because I found him. When they didn't kill me, they decided to hide his body. Illegal. They probably intended to drive away and dispose of it so there'd be no evidence when an efficient, smart, alert, courageous police officer like yourself came around to ask questions. Hey, hey. that sounds reasonable. Who's behind all this? Well, uh, Mrs. Elkins threatened me once and tried to kill me once. Ma! Well, land sake. Well, that's her, yes. I want to talk to her. Where's she? Roaming the countryside with a gun, no doubt. Oh. Well, we'll have to clear all this up and see what it's all about. Now, who's this fellow in the car? His name's James Linden. Got a pencil? Better write that down. Tilden, huh? Linden. Well. Uh, by any strange coincidence, Sheriff, you happen to know a man named Dundee, San Francisco homicide? Lieutenant Dundee, old Tom. Old Tom, yes. Shucks, I learned everything I know about police work from him. Yeah, well, that fits. And law's law. Dundee always said... Yeah, I've heard him turn... say it, Sheriff, but... And I am to enforce it around here. One side, Mr. Slade. Spade. Uh, hey, uh, uh, you'll be sorry... Well. Now look. now, look here, all you Elkins. This is Homer Pickett talking, and I ain't no small town constable. I'm the sheriff of this county. You'll get a swear deal from me, but first I order you in the name of the law to throw down your guns. Well? <laughs> oh, 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 my. my oh. You all right? Nothing but my feelings hurt. Oh, 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 I warned you. I, I, I thought that'd do some good. Well, now you know. Hey, look, maybe it did do some good. I ain't giving up, Jack. I ain't giving up. It's me, Mrs. Elkins. She came across the farmyard as the first light was showing in the eastern sky. Her hands were above her head. One held a shotgun. Mark, get back where you belong, Mark. We could hear, but we couldn't see him. Maud stopped, hesitated for a moment, and then began running towards us. She almost made it. No! to drag her back, expecting any second to be the target for the night. There was a sudden and curious silence as I pulled her into the barn. She was still alive. Thank sakes. That man's been missing everybody all night. Never thought he'd be able to hit me. Easy. I come from good stock. I'm no criminal, Mr. Spade. Sheriff, you know that. Yeah, I know, Maud. I know. Let me take a look at you. You'll be okay. Don't blame Bert too much. He wanted to have money once in his life. So when this man came along with all the jewelry, Bert went out of his mind, I guess. He put the man in the cave. And the dog, too. So the dog wouldn't call attention to him. And then he took the man's car. Went into San Francisco to try to sell the jewels in the underwear. <laughs> no luck, eh? Bert says they laughed at him. The jewels would... Just paste. Stamples. And he came back and found me at the cave, and he figured he had to knock us both off. I just stuck by him all the way. Now he's like a tiger that smelt blood. No telling what he'll do. We'll have to get help, Spade. Roadblocks, bloodhound. No. No, this is his land. He won't run. He'll hide here. Until... Where? Why? In the cave. Well, I uh, reasoned one that no matter how much a man loved his land, he was not going to let himself be trapped in a cave with only one exit. And two, it followed, therefore, that if he did hide in the cave, there was more than one way out, which the late Linden hadn't found. Sheriff Pickett volunteered to watch the front of the cave while I looked around for a rear exit. 
After a 20-minute search, which netted me nothing, I remembered the car parked inside the barn and how quickly Elkins had carried Lyndon's body to it. I went back there and took a look around. In a corner of the barn, I found a trail of dirt leading to a bale of hay. When I moved the, hay, the bale, I found, you guessed it, a trap door. I pulled it open, caught a familiar whiff of used-up air, and lowered myself into a black hole that turned out to be a passageway. I cautiously made my way forward in the darkness for a few yards. Who is it? Who is it? I pressed back against the dirt wall, listening to him approach. When I figured he was close enough, I threw a cloud of dirt toward him across the passageway. His gun flashed and lit up the whole place for a second, and I fired three times at the silhouette. I waited, then I went towards him. He was lying on his back. I kicked his gun away, and when I bent over him to feel his pulse, he suddenly came to life. Something crashed against the side of my head, and everything became darker than the inside of a cave. The next thing I knew, I was looking at a pair of red-rimmed eyes. Several minutes had gone by. Thought you was a goner for sure. You ain't used to this country fighting, are you? Uh, is this country lucky, Sheriff? Uh, yeah. Give me. Here. <coughs> yeah, country liquor. Tell me, Sheriff, did you by any chance... Well, sure, of course I did. I got him, Slate. Period and a report. Sam! Hmm? Do you mean to tell me you let a little country sheriff outdo you? Well, Effie, Homer Pickett's coming up for re-election next fall, and besides, you might think I was egotistical if I told you how it really ended. But your reputation! You're the greatest private detective of them all! And so I can afford to be generous. Now, not another word. Scoot, type that up. If your supply of Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic is getting low, better make a note to get some more tonight or first thing tomorrow. Remember, Wild Root Cream Oil is the famous hair tonic that grooms your hair neatly and naturally, relieves dryness, removes loose dandruff. Always keep a big bottle or tube on hand. And ask your barber for a professional application of Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic. Again and again, the choice of men and women and children, too. Let me see. Let me see here. F, you rewrote the ending. I had to, Sam. You're much too modest. And Sam Spade, with a knot of cold fury in the pit of his stomach, a vindictive fire in his eyes, stepped wearily over the loose rocks on the cave floor to do battle with the thing that loomed up in the darkness ahead. Mm -hmm. The thing's roar filled the night with terror. But Sam Spade, dauntless and knowing not fear... Stepped up to the monster, laughed in its hairy face, and with one quick convulsion of his powerful shoulder muscles, dropped the thing in its tracks. I see. Well, is that the way you think it ended, Effie? Oh, Sam, I guess I was being a little foolish. I'll change it. No. No, as long as you've done it this way, we'll leave it this way. Can't waste paper. No, no, I'll change it, Sam. Leave it! Oh! Sam. Yeah? I copied that ending out of an old black mask magazine. You what? Don't be mad. Come here. Come here. I copied that out of an old whiz bang. Oh, Sam. <laughs> night. Good night, sweetheart. <laughs> The Adventures of Sam Spade are produced and directed by William Spear. Sam Spade is played by Howard Duff. Lorene Tuttle is Effie. Tonight's adventure with Sam Spade was written for radio by John Michael Hayes and E. Jack Newman. Musical direction by Lud Gluskin with score composed by Pierre and Rene Garagang. Join us again next Sunday when producer William Spear presents another adventure with Sam Spade. Brought to you by Wild Root Cream Oil. 
Again and again, the choice of men and women and children, too. This is Dick Joy speaking. Here's an exciting new shampoo that's grand for all the family. And here's our own Squeaky to tell you about it. Look at your hair. Is it stringy and dull? Does it only cover your skull? The Wild Root Liquid Cream Shampoo is just the thing for girls like you. Gleams your hair, know what I mean, and leaves your hair squeaky clean. Squeaky clean? Squeaky clean. Wild Root Liquid Cream Shampoo. Stay tuned for The Summer Symphony with Katherine Grayson on NBC. Welcome back. Well, I think this was a really solid episode. An interesting premise, a good setup, and some really nice dashes of humor. Plus, I thought the conversation between Fade and Effie was really nicely done with the kiss from Sam for her rewrite of the report with the nod to Black Mask magazine where Sam Spade originally appeared. The series would end two weeks later or at least uh, Duff's involvement in it, with the femme fatale keeper. The reason that it ended was because Duff was named in Red Channels, a publication that purported to reveal communist manipulation in the entertainment industry. The historical record on Howard Duff is pretty clear. He was not a communist. Reading the allegations that were included in Red Channels, what was cited was his objection to certain activities and prosecutions, which was just in the realm of legitimate political disagreement. And also they cited uh, him as for his association with a radio program created by Dashiell Hammett. However, untrue the allegation, Wild Root Cream Oil decided they wanted out. And without a sponsor, NBC uh, was going to cancel the program. Even with 250,000 letters from listeners streaming in and protesting Wild Root's decision. Wild Root decided to sponsor a new program called Charlie Wild private detective. Amusingly enough, the series was named after the title of their closing jingle, which was called Cream Oil Charlie, and the brand was the basis for the last name. So we have one of the most completely corporately named characters since Falco was a character in a series of mysteries created to promote the company Philco, who manufactured radios. None of the Charlie Wilde mysteries are in circulation. The radio series ran for 13 weeks, and the series starred George Petrie, who appeared in a bunch of programs, including Call the Police, which we played previously, and would later star in The Amazing Mr. Malone, which we've also already played on this podcast and who we are currently enjoying in the role of District Attorney Markham. However, Wild Root wanted to take Charlie Wilde to television, and NBC could not find a spot for it. So, Charlie Wilde moved to CBS, and George Petrie left, and the series aired over CBS radio and television with Kevin O'Morrison initially playing Wild and then being replaced by John McQuay. Wild Root actually canceled the program at that point, but Charlie Wild, who couldn't help but call to mind Wild Root Cream Oil, continued to stick around for another year appearing on ABC television and then on DuMont television. And really, during this 
era. It was very much the era of live TV. Now, there is one kinescope of Charlie Wilde that made it onto YouTube, and there are around 15 episodes over at UCLA and the Bailey Center in Los Angeles. There's some talk about Effie uh, being in Charlie Wilde. I'm dubious of that since George Petre worked in New York, Lorraine Tuttle based in Hollywood. Occasionally, you would have actors like Frank Lovejoy, who worked in New York radio and then went to Hollywood, but uh, that was kind of rare, and that didn't happen with Lorene Tuttle. As for the ending of Sam Spade, in his book, Martin Graham prints the script for the final Sam and Effie scene with Howard Duff and Lorene Tuttle with Sam talking about placing a want ad and also assuring Effie that the bonus provided by their last client will cover Effie's back salary. Effie made an appeal for people to write in demanding the show be brought back. And Sam comforts Effie and says, Look, one of us has got to be strong. This isn't the end of the world. Let's be big about it. It's been four and a half nice years. We'll see what happens. I won't worry. You'll get work. And Effie says at the end of this, well, then it isn't goodbye, Sam? Spade concludes, no, not for us. Good night, sweetheart. And thus ended Howard Duff's time as Sam Spade. It has to be said that the effects of Duff's blacklisting were limited. This may have been because of his being married to Ida Lupino, as well as the flimsiness of the allegations against him. One magazine even alleged that Ashel Hammett had sold Duff on communism, when the truth was that Howard Duff never met Dashiell Hammett. As was the case with all of Hammett's radio detective series, his only real role uh, was to collect the checks at the end of the month. Even when the show was boasting of its relationship to Hammett, the character as portrayed on the radio was much more the from the collaborative process of William Spear, the writers, and Duff himself than it was from Hammett. Duff's blacklist time would be brief, maybe a year, perhaps even a few months. Some older, old-time radio resources state that Duff did not work in radio for another six years. However, a recording of an episode of Hollywood Star Playhouse less than six months after the end of Sam Spade has emerged in recent years. And less than three months after the cancellation of Sam Spade, he was a featured guest on Hedda Hopper's Hollywood. The mention in Red Channels, rather than destroying his career, was more of a bump in the road. He had film and television roles throughout the 1950s, including the sitcom Mr. Adams and Eve, in which he starred with Ida Lupino. He would later have a lead role in the TV series Dante in 1960 and 61, where he played a casino owner who was originally played by Dick Powell as a recurring lead character in the anthology series Four Star Playhouse. And he'd also star in the 1967 to 69 series Felony Squad as Detective Sam Stone. And outside of those starring roles, he would be in film and on television uh, nearly up until the point he passed away of a heart attack at the age of 77, appearing in shows ranging from I Spy and uh, the 1960s Batman to The Streets of San Francisco, Murder, She Wrote, Magnum P.I., and The Love Boat. Of course, none of these roles really achieved the cultural resonance he enjoyed as Sam Spade. 
and it's sad how that ended. With what Wild wrote tried to do with Charlie Wild, I kind of wonder whether if events had unfolded differently, if Sam Spade would have made it to television starring Dashiell Hammett. As it is, though, we have just around 50 of the adventures of Sam Spade that Duff recorded, which is less than a quarter of the 221 episodes that were recorded with him. However, on the bright side, three of the episodes that we played in this run would not have been available four or five years ago. So we can be grateful for that. We can also appreciate that unlike the other series that Hammett was credited as the creator of, we have a much higher percentage of Duff Sam Spade episodes than we do Fat Man and The Thin Man, both of which are missing 96% of their episodes. So while we may not have the entirety of Duff's run, or even close to it, we have enough to really appreciate what made The Adventures of Sam Spade one of old-time radio's most iconic programs. And of course, we should be clear that we're not done with Sam Spade totally. There would be more, but with a very different feel. But we'll talk about that all next week. Well, now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. And I want to go ahead and thank Robert. Robert has been one of our Patreon supporters since August of 2016, currently supporting the program at the detective sergeant level of $7.14 or more per month. Thank you so much for your support, Robert. And that will actually do it for today. If you are enjoying the podcast, I encourage you to follow us with your favorite podcast software. And please rate and review the podcast wherever you download this from. We'll be back next Monday with a new era in Sam Spade. But join us back here tomorrow for yours truly, Johnny Dollar, where... What was she wearing, Mrs. Stromberg? Oh, she had her coat on. Her mink coat? Yes. Well, how'd you know about her mink coat? A friend of mine. I'll take a look around out here. All right. Oh, wait a minute. I'll come with you. You know, of course, she might have got... wait a second. Look, is that Gloria? Why, yes, I think so. Something's wrong with her. Yes. The girl crossing the street in the mink coat weaved slightly from side to side. As I got close to her, I could see she was a pretty girl in her late 20s, blonde hair, dark eyes. She hardly looked up as I came up to her, just stopped and stood there, weaving slightly. Miss Tinney? Yes, yes. Well, can I help you? I'm Johnny Dollar. Please. Well, come on, we better go inside. Yes. What is it? He he struck me. He, He what? He struck me. And I... Oh, Mr. Dollar. Here, come on. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.